I share Clay Thompson's frustration in him not making the list. I mean, I think in a guy who's made an all NBA team, three time champ, five time all star owner of some of the biggest performances in NBA playoff history. You know, I I think he's got a uh, a really good case to make that list. You know, with any list like this, it's so hard because there's more than 75, 76 great players in the league. So, you know, comparing guys 70 through 85 or whatever the range is, is going to be really, really difficult. One of the big ones that I'm going to say, I'm just going to say it. Anthony Davis should not be on this list. Oh, my goodness. Because Dwight Howard's not on it. That yeah, is the biggest people, snub of all. Dwight Howard not being on the list is, is y'all are they were drunk or something. That's great. Yeah, I don't get that. It's, it's just because of his reputation. I mean, I, I, I don't think know. He's a lot closer to top fifty than he is to top seventy five. I don't know if they forgot about the Orlando days. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they just saw the aftermath of that when he went from team to team to team, and Kobe looked at him as a child when he was with Los Angeles. Uh, granted, you know, a lot of the reputation that he has uh, was warranted. What you did after Orlando, you haven't really been the same since. So we're going to put Anthony Davis in your spot, who just won a championship, who really just made a name for his, himself, a legit name for himself. I don't know. I don't know if we forget the New Orleans days where he was getting bounced out of the first round and nobody was going to the arena that he plays in. Really? Come on now. I, I, I don't even disagree with your overall point that he maybe shouldn't be on the list, but that that's Anthony Davis, man. He was a superstar even in New Orleans. Big stop man in the league for how so many stop. years? He was the best big man in the league, what, four out of six years in the NBA. I never thought Anthony Davis was the best big man. Really? Let let <laughs> let let, let's, let me be let me be let me be a hundred percent clear. And no point in time, I don't care if you're taking Dwight Howard when he was in do the uh, Orlando days, uh-huh. and Anthony Davis right now at his peak is not better than Dwight Howard. This man's been one of the best players in the league since the day he was drafted. Stop it. How is that a controversial opinion? <laughs> this, this, this is so controversial. To me, it is because I never view Anthony Davis as a top three player. We have people thinking he's better than Kevin Durant. And I said, in what universe? No, I'm not going all the way in, there, but in what to include universe? him. He's been one of the best two or three big men in the league for a damn near a decade. His talent, his size goes up against anybody throughout history, really. Anthony Davis is not a big man. Don't put Anthony Davis in that category as a center because he's just not. I don't. I mean, he. I don't know if he's a center. He's a big man, though. He can play the four he's, or the he's five. He's a big man that he's a big man that's soft. Let's call it what it is. He's a big I don't man. Know. That, I know people. He's a big, I know people question his toughness, but. I mean, not to me. I mean, maybe his durability because he's always been injured, but not. I mean, his toughness, like he can bang with with the biggest men in the league on both ends of the floor. He's banging it down low with these other centers. I don't see that. I mean, I agree that sometimes he doesn't want to, which is why, you know, we've had how many discussions about he doesn't want to play the five, but he has proven that he can. And that if he's going to that, that he's still one of I mean, he could play the five and he would still be one of the best big men in the league. I just think it's a mentality thing. I don't think that he wants to do that. That first of all, that opening that opening night game was so much fun. My first impression on the Warriors is that if Clay Thompson and James Wiseman can be healthy, the Warriors can win the entire champ. They can win it all. If they can get Clay Thompson to be 95% of the Clay Thompson of old, no, that's a tough and that's a big ass. Two, two major, major, really career ending. Uh, injuries that he had and you know the rookie James Wiseman he still has a lot to you know to learn in this league this second year but I think uh, over the offseason he was able to get in the gym with Clay Thompson if they could come back and healthy I think the only team that can beat them is the Nets with Kyrie Irving I'm not as high on Golden State as you are but I do think that if everything breaks right, they do have a team that that can contend for a championship this year. Um, I will add that not only is it going to take healthy Clay and healthy James Wiseman, but Wiseman is going to have to be substantially better than he was a year ago. I think right now they're like fourth in offensive efficiency. I don't know if, if you know, they're going to be that good and if they're going to be conference finals type team. But, you know, from what I've seen so far, they're better than I thought they were going to be. 
guys like Andre Iguodala, Nemanja Bielitsa, uh, and those are guys who have the ability to catch the ball, read a compromised defense, make the right decision, and you know, kind of just have the ball humming. And I mean, I think we saw a lot of that in the third and the fourth quarter of that opening night game. The the ball was moving, getting good looks for you know guys like Jordan Poole and and Andrew Wiggins. Uh, that's that's very sustainable offense. How do you feel about the Lakers right now? You know, we all knew that it was going to take a little while for this to get going. Um, but I don't know that everybody knew, you know, how ugly it was going to be on opening night. But, I mean, we, we've seen games like that from Russell Westbrook before. And it's going to take him time to really figure out where he needs to be in this offense. What did you say? If he's off the ball, then he's not really doing anything. And, I mean, that you know, that's kind of been the case for him for the last several years where, when you know, he has a super high usage rate. When he has the ball, he's usually doing positive things, whether it be scoring or assisting. But when he doesn't have the ball, he's usually just staying there. And then we know that if he if he's going to catch and shoot, that, you know, he's probably a below 30% shooter. You're Frank Vogel. Where do you put him? I mean, how do you make it work within the offense? I do think you have to have him in the pick and roll as a screener more often. You can get him in other places where he can use that quick explosion and, and use that going downhill where he's not going to have to be the main decision maker, then he can then he can be successful in this offense. It's just whether he's going to be able to accept that role. To, and to elaborate on that, in their uh, win this past weekend over Memphis, uh, we, did see, we did see them do that uh, a few times down the stretch with Russell Westbrook screening for LeBron um, to, to great success. And, I mean, Russ in a four and three situation, we – we know we know his playmaking ability, and we we know his passing skills. Um, he looked he looked somebody off to the corner and hit Anthony Davis easy dunk. Um, that I imagine will be something we we see a, a lot more of. Westbrook would be better served off the bench. I don't know he's not going to do it, um, but for the team's sake, how their team is structured, so I think they have a lot to figure out. And like I said before, if anybody can do it, LeBron James can.